Good morning. First and foremost, I would like to thank uh, the organizers of this event for inviting me. It's an honor and privilege to be here with you this morning. So this is a topic that was given to me, but there will be a few tweaks uh, later. That happens to be my picture when I was a little younger, but because of uh, disease and illness, this is, is me today. <laughs> Well, first and foremost, uh, again, uh, thank you. How many of you here dreamt of the work that you are having right now? One, two. Meaning majority of us do not know what we would like or what we will become in the future. Just like in my case, I never dreamt that I will become a doctor. When I was a little younger, what I wanted to become then was to become a child actor. <laughs> However, during my time, there is this wonder boy named Nino Mulak, and obviously, I cannot compete with him. When I was already in high school, I thought probably priesthood is for me. And when I applied for a priesthood, when they interviewed me, they asked me, why do you want to become a priest? And I said, well, I want to become a pope in the future. Okay, okay, if you become a pope, what would like, what would be your name? And I said, Pop Secola. And that ended my priesthood career. And that's why I ended up as a doctor. But even as a doctor, uh, I never dreamt that, uh, in the, uh, that I will become a specialist in occupational medicine. But my advocacy was really preventive medicine. I had my training initially, uh, as a pediatrician, then public health, and then eventually ended up in occupational medicine because occupational medicine is a branch of preventive medicine with clinical application. And I belong to the Philippine College of Occupational Medicine, and it is a specialty organization of the Philippine Medical Association under the division of the Philippine Academy of Family Physicians. So this is a group of doctors specializing in occupational medicine. And we're about more than 3,500 today, and 26 chapters all over the Philippines. Our organization is a specialty organization recognized by the Philippine or PhilHealth, an accredited continuing professional development provider of the uh, Professional Regulatory, Regulatory Commission, and accredited to provide the basic training in occupational medicine exclusively for doctors and dentists. And this is our mission. And these are some of the things that we do. It states here, don't give up on your dreams, keep sleeping. If there's any one of you who would like to sleep, it's okay with me. Just one rule. Please, please do not snore too loudly. You, you're, 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 the person beside you might wake up. Anyway, what is health? According to the World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So if we're going to look at this slide, we would like to be at this position. Meaning, the factors in our environment, the agent and us are in an equilibrium. Meaning, disease has not set in. And this is the state that we would like to be at majority of our lives. However, if we fail to control these factors, we will be at this stage or even at this stage, which means that the disease process is already within our system. And we know for the fact that when we start doing that, there are a lot of problems that can happen. It's either you recover or on the other extreme, death can be something that can happen. But even if you recover, there is that state of disability, defects, 
discomfort, and so forth and so on. And if you're at this stage, what are we supposed to do? This is under uh, the levels or secondary and tertiary levels of prevention. And we would like to be here, which is the first level or the primary level of prevention. Now, if you are already in the state we're in their disease process, according to the International Labor Organization, every 15 seconds, there is a mortality due to a work-related accident or disease. 153 workers have a work-related accident daily. 6,300 people die either because of occupational accidents or work-related diseases. And if you translate this annually, this is about 2.34 million people dying of work-related accidents and diseases. And majority of this are fatal diseases. Diseases are not dramatic as far as establishments are concerned because always they look at accidents, injuries, but majority of what happens in establishment, the bulk is around 80 to 85 percent a result of an illness or a disease. For productivity, you would not like this to happen because 337 million workers fall victims because of work-related accidents and diseases that results into more than four days absences. And according to the International Labor Organization, they estimate that there is an annual loss of 4% as far as gross domestic product is concerned. And if you talk about figures, that is 2.8 trillion US dollars, direct and indirect cost of injuries and diseases. And we, if we talk about the people, the workers, it will cost more impoverishment to our workers and their respective families. The cost of health, the bulk, comes from out-of-pocket expenses. It's in the range of about 57 to 60 percent here in the Philippines. In terms of establishment, you, want to, you do not like this to happen, reduce productivity and work capacity. And of course, whether individually or collectively or nationwide, it increases healthcare expenditures. This is just to show you our annual labor and employment status. This is the distribution of all establishment by sector. And as you can see, the bulk of establishment is under the sector of wholesale and retail trade, followed by accommodation and food services activities, and manufacturing. But in terms of employees, number one in numbers is that of manufacturing, followed by wholesale and retail trade, and administrative and support services activities. Now, with regards to diseases, actually we have some problems with regards to Recording. In fact, uh, ILO uh, is, has conducted uh, focus group discussions and survey, and it turned out we don't have problems with regards to surveys with injuries and accidents. What we have is the underreporting or the notification of diseases and illnesses. And the data that I have uh, is based on the data that were submitted. Uh, by some establishments, uh, because there is a requirement that you submit records of illnesses and diseases, but there is under-reporting. So, uh, in behalf of DOLE, I am encouraging or enjoining you to submit this data. As you can see, between these two periods, between the period of 2011 and 2013, there is an increment or the diseases, occupational diseases, doubled. 
And among this, the bulk, the increment between those periods are in the sector of mining and quarrying, construction, and administrative and support services activities. In terms of diseases, diseases, these are our records. Number one is musculoskeletal disorder. Actually, again, I uh, already talked to the Department of Labor because if you talk about occupational diseases, some of uh, the data here are not really diseases, but rather symptoms or signs. But uh, according to them, they're going to correct it next time around. Like for example, back pain has the highest number, followed by essential hypertension and neck shoulder pain. And in 2013, back pain still ranks number one, but if you're going to get the percentage, it went down from about 36% to 31%. And essential hypertension and peptic ulcer are almost 11, 10-11%, and neck shoulder pain is about 10.2%. These are occupational diseases. These are the records, uh, these are the numbers that we have right now. But we are also lacking with regards to work-related diseases. There are three kinds of diseases in the workplace. Number one that probably most of us are familiar with are general diseases. But what we would like to concentrate on are work-related diseases and occupational diseases. Now, if we break down the diseases, occupational diseases, meaning this is a result of the work, musculoskeletal disorder is about 51-52%, followed by essential hypertension, 11%, then dermatitis and asthma are almost the same number, 5%, among all those reported. If we break down the work-related musculoskeletal diseases, you can see back pains. I, I mentioned it is a technical uh, symptoms. What are our initiatives? Actually, it's not just for corporation, but in general, the initiatives that our organization is doing in order for us to propagate our occupational and sa occupational safety and health advocacy. Num uh, I mentioned earlier that PCOM, as an organization, is a prime mover in the preservation, promotion, protection, and enhancement of the health, wellness, and safety of workers in all occupation through its active members all over the country with collaboration with all stakeholders, both local and international. And in general, or in a nutshell, the efforts of the organization in OSH is to decrease and or eliminate work-related injuries and illnesses in the workplace. I mentioned occupational med medicine is a unique specialty, and even our organization is unique in the sense that I mentioned that we are an accredited safety training organization. We are a medical specialty organization, and members are specialists in OSH. So collectively, this is what we would like to happen. Chapter 2 of the Labor Code states that the Department of Labor develop and implement training programs. And one of the things that we do to help organizations, establishments, is through the basic course in occupational medicine. There is a rule in the Occupational Safety and Health Standards that states that physicians or personnel, occupational personnel, that will be employed or retained or, or working in establishment should undergo the basic training in occupational health and safety. And our organization is helping in that term because we're accredited by the Department of Labor to train exclusively doctors and dentists in the basic course, in basic of occupational medicine. But aside from that, we ensure that our members To our training and education, some of them who goes into advanced training become diplomates and fellows, meaning that they are, or they have more capabilities, or should I say, additional knowledge with regards occupational medicine. 
We offer advanced courses, special training and postgraduate courses, training, conventions, seminars, and workshops, this RTDs, to ensure that after the basic training in occupational medicine, our doctors are more capable or updated with regards to the practice of occupational medicine. And if they are working in the different establishments, that will ensure that occupational safety and health will be a culture in your establishments. Aside from that, our role, there is, a, there, there is a provision in the Occupational Safety and Health Standards, Rule 1965, Section 0.2, which states the function at, of an occupational health physician. Our paradigm is that the doctors in establishment do clinical work. But the thing is, if you look at the standards, there are more administrative work that should be given to the occupational health physicians because they help in the preventive side of medicine. So occupational health services, this rule states that every employer should establish in his place of employment occupational health services and that this applies to all establishments. So doctors who are not simply clinicians will be able to help corporations, establishments to have an honest to goodness occupational health services. It's not just clinics. Aside from this, we help different establishments again through information dissemination creation of awareness with, with regards to occupational safety and health. We have participated and continue to participate in the formulation of national occupational safety and health policies and programs. There might be some, a few, that some employers do not want. But the thing is, if we try to trans translate, if we try to dig deeper on these policies and programs, you will find out that it will be for the betterment, not only of the workers, but also of your establishment. There was a study in the past that states that if you give importance to health, 40% of productivity will increase. If there is any other study right now, then probably it will only validate that survey. Then we collaborate and partner with various stakeholders, with different organizations, umbrella organization. And if establishment would, would like us or would, would request us to assist, we are more than willing to help because it's really our advocacy to propagate occupational safety and health. We network, we exchange information with different safety organization, safety training organization, because that's one way also of updating ourselves and ensuring capacity building as far as our members are concerned. Obviously, more importantly, is research. Our problem as far as research is concerned, there are some establishment that would, they would not like research done in their companies. But how can we help the industry if we will not do this. In fact, if you have numbers, if you have occupational health physicians in your establishment, they can do that for you. Even the numbers that the Department of Labor is asking for, this is not to persecute you, but rather to help them in policy formulation and program development. And of course, our members would like to assist you with regards to law compliance. These are just some of the local partners that we have at the moment, aside from individual corporations and establishments. My dear friends, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Partly, 
The reason why there are illnesses and diseases in various establishments is because there are risk factors, there are hazards in the working environment. And partly, probably, we are also part of it. And if we continue solving those problems by simply taking care of health concerns, consultations of our workers, then probably we cannot lower the number of illnesses and diseases. We have to shift our paradigm with preventive medicine. Preventive medicine means even before the disease or illness sets in, we have done something. I am surprised that there are some establishments who would see the effectiveness or efficiency of their doctors, of their health personnel, personnel with the numbers of patients seen in their clinics. But that is a wrong paradigm. If we, as occupational health physicians, are relevant, our role is to reduce the people being seen for consultation. Because it means we are effective in the preventive medicine side. And of course, we cannot do it without the approval of the administration of the establishment. And if you would like to maximize our members, occupational medicine specialists, allow them to do their work. So my dear friends, if there are a few of you whom or who fell asleep, well, the best way to make your dreams come true is to wake up. I'm about to end. My dear friends, the health and safety of workers are not, is not, are not the sole responsibility of the healthcare team. It is a responsibility of all the people in the establishment, from the administrator down to the workers. Let us work as one, as a team, in order to ensure occupational safety and health in our workplaces, in our nation, for increased productivity. Remember, a healthy worker means increased productivity, increased productivity, competitive establishment, and competitive establishment will mean increased economic activity. And that will be good for each one of us. Thank you very much.